trained myself pretty much and was not dry at a ridiculously young age, which I'm sure my mother really appreciated. Um, I basically decided I didn't want to, uh, like, night dry. I was like, I don't want to wear nappies anymore. And I wet my bed the first night and then I never did it again. So, yeah, that's one thing most people, I was, I was ahead on everything as a kid, pretty much. That's what happens when you're the youngest and you have older siblings, really. You tend to just go a bit faster. All right, from Stephanie Farfan, uh, what is one trend you will never get on board with? I think probably the stupid eyebrows trend, any one of the stupid eyebrows, the wavy eyebrow, or what is it now, um, the shoe eyebrow, um, the feather eyebrow, I just, nope, not happening. Um... Next, we have a, a question from Kara, who is uh, Mascara Cakes. Um, and apparently she's been watching videos with Australians trying American food. Um, what is a food from the US you'd like to try? Um, um, Hershey Kisses. That's just just something that I'd like to try. Hmm. Um, did, she also asked me, did you go to nail tech school and how long have you been doing your nails so well? <laughs> um, I, I went to a school called uh, Heather Langton's uh, Academy of Beauty or Beauty Academy um, and I have a certificate three in beauty services which means I can do manicures and pedicures, like normal manicures and pedicures, um, and I can wax people and tint eyebrows and eyelashes. I um, also know how to perm eyelashes. Not that I do it, but I know how to. Um, and I have um, the necessary by our, st our state's kind of qualification system, um, I have the necessary qualifications to apply acrylic enhancements 
um, and use an electric drill because you actually are supposed to be certified in order to use an electric drill on people um, so I have that qualification uh, the other one is apply nail art which is really quite funny because they didn't teach me anything I actually was teaching other people <laughs> um, I've, I've been doing my nails pretty solidly for um, it's gonna be like five or six years I've been pretty solidly doing like nail art and stuff like that um, I've been painting my nails since I was a teenager um, but yeah since I, I got my qualifications sorry I was just looking at the certificates on the wall um, in November of 2015 I got the last of my qualifications which was the um, acrylics part of it um, yeah so I've been um, doing that since then pretty much so. um, and her third question was what's your favorite color of nail polish my favorite color of nail polish is hollow <laughs> uh, I actually uh, posted a thing on Facebook where people um, was like ask me my top five in any particular topic type thing somebody's like what's your top five favorite nail polish colors and I'm like number one is hollow and they're like what color is hollow and it's like uh, rainbow <laughs> and that's not technically color but hollow would be my favorite followed by purple so because purple is my favorite color uh, okay what's next Andrea has asked what's your favorite type of <coughs> nail art to do um i think um probably um painting designs using like acrylic paint where like they get like quite in complicated like more um art type painting so like landscapes and uh animals like trying to do like realistic animals they're a lot more complex and involved but I, I quite enjoy that um, <coughs> and you know they kind of look a little bit off and then you put top coat on them and they just all kind of like meld together and it's just like they just look amazing I will insert a couple of pictures of the kind of thing that I'm, I'm talking about and if I can find it um, my nail art of Van Gogh's Starry Night it's one of my favorite manicures I did ever um, yeah, that kind of thing. Uh, Michelle Johnson asked, um, she is Mascara de Midnight, um, where's your favourite spot to visit in Australia? Oh, hmm. I really don't have one. I'm not really a travelling around type of person. I don't really go visiting places very much. Uh, if you'd asked me, you know, six years ago, I would have said Melbourne because that's where my grandfather was. Um, but he's since passed away. I have no reason. I mean, I have friends in Melbourne. Sorry, Jade. Um, but I don't. There's nothing drawing me anywhere else other than where I am. So. Yeah, there's not really any favourite spot in Australia. Um, Joanne, who is a bad kitty, asked, will your daughter pop up in any videos and does she watch your videos? Yes, she does watch the videos and yes, she will be popping up in other videos. Um, we should be getting another Red Paw Paw box soon, which is the opening that she does with me. Um, and she has asked me to do the... My daughter does my makeup or uh, I do my daughter's makeup videos again which we did ages ago on the channel actually I do my daughter's makeup is one of my most viewed videos strangely enough um, so she wants to redo that and she starts school holidays in like a week I think it is or two weeks or something so we will be filming those videos so um, yeah she uh, and she also wants me to video her uh, playing on her ukulele and uh, singing so yeah so Omnaya asked me she's Omnaya's wish uh, down below I will, I'll link everyone uh, the question
question she asked is what truly makes you happy? Oh, my, f my family, the people that are near and dear to me, my friends, um, and anything that's creative is what makes me happy. Okay, Stephanie asked me if you could buy anything right this minute and money was not an issue, what would it be and why? I would buy a, I think it's MD is the brand, um, one of their nail tables which you can get customised so you can get them in any colour you want and any design that you want, like if you want pink and black like zebra print on them, you can get it made like that and they come with an inbuilt exhaust fan in them for doing acrylic nails on and like gel nails and stuff because you get a lot of powder like there's like dust everywhere. Um, and I do have like a little fan thing but it's not very good so if I could oh, but they are so expensive they're like over a thousand it's like a really good one with everything that you want with storage underneath it and everything you're looking at probably five six hundred dollars at least Um, so like one of those and a top quality um, nail drill that they're about five hundred dollars. Like that. So yeah, that that would probably be what I would buy. <laughs> that or I'd get the kitchen renovated. I think the nail table. Uh, Layla asked, "What are your guilty pleasures?" Uh, Chocolate is a guilty pleasure. Not really supposed to eat carbs. Um, and obviously, uh, I just saw a guy come out of a tank, like a water tank. <laughs> Very disturbing. Um, yeah, chocolate would be um, probably top of that list of guilty pleasures. But I really like chocolate and so like I let myself eat it sometimes. Probably far too often, particularly this time of year. She also asked me what can you waste what can you waste time doing? Uh, nothing. I waste time doing nothing. Um, yeah, I might be playing or whatever, but I actually waste a lot of time watching YouTube videos because I don't always do anything while I'm watching. Um, part of that is because I don't like if I was the kind of person who put YouTube videos on like TV so it's like loud and if I'm not like looking at it I can still hear it that would be different I'd probably do lots of other stuff but I sit with my headphones on because I don't necessarily need everybody else to be hearing because like there's a lot of people in this house so um, and they can make quite a bit of noise and it's I I would rather be able to watch it on my own like that so um, yeah, I, I waste a lot of time doing that. I mean, some people wouldn't call it wasting time, but I know some people who do call it wasting time. Uh, and the last question she asked me is, what did you want to be when you were a kid? I wanted to be an opera singer um, or a, an actress. It's, yeah, But mainly an op opera singer. I was in school choir, that sort of thing. Uh, Cara asked another question. <laughs> coffee or tea? Definitely coffee. Not really a big fan of tea. Uh, she also asked what my favourite food is. Oh, that's such a hard question. <laughs> but I, I like so many foods. Um, but probably, you know, it's kind of a guilty pleasure and I basically have it like once a year for my birthday. Um, it would be black forest cake. It just... It has lots of good memory association and it is bloody delicious. I absolutely love it. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's not something that I could eat every day for the rest of my life. If that was the case, it would actually be salad. Because I quite like salad, so. Michelle asked, what do you do for fun outdoors by yourself or with your family? Um, I don't really do anything outside for fun. Um, I'll, and there are a number of reasons for that. Uh, I am stupidly pale and I burn very, very quickly and I live in Australia. So even in the middle of winter, it doesn't take very long to get burnt here. Um, yes. 
and even if it snowed, like in the places in Australia where it snows, it, it's really easy to get sunburned really, really quickly, and I'm that person. I have two colours, I have white and I have red, which is sunburn. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I don't really go outside a lot because I really don't like outside very much. Because um, there's like, you know, bugs and wasps and... Uh, um, so, yeah, I don't really do anything fun outside, quite honestly. Um, and as you call driving around with my partner, um, we refer to the car as the cone of silence. Uh, so we get in the car and we just, like, rant about stuff and we... That's where we talk about stuff. That if we don't want to do it in front of our kids. Uh, the next question she asks is, have you ever gone sailing in uh, on Sydney Harbour? I have been on a dinner cruise on Sydney Harbour many, many, many years ago, like before my kids were born. So like, it's like 20, 25 odd years ago, really long time ago. Um, and have you visited Sydney Opera House? I have been outside Sydney Opera House. I've walked past the Sydney Opera House. I haven't actually been in the Sydney Opera House. Um, yeah. Uh, I live a long way from Sydney. Uh, I've been to Sydney twice in my life. Um, yeah, I, I live a long way. Actually, no, three times. I've been to Sydney three. Sorry. Four times. See, I can never remember. Um, I went once as a... Uh, doing volunteer at a handicap camp uh, when I was 18. Um, and then um, a, a guy that I was sort of involved with, I went and stayed with him a couple of times because he was living in Sydney then. And when my daughter was not very old... Um, I went to Sydney for a christening of my nephew um, and got together with uh, one of the people I met online. We kind of hung out for a couple of hours, that was fun. Um, yeah, so, um, and it was only on one of the trips that I went when I was staying with the ex boyfriend type person um, that we went past Sydney Harbour and went on a Sydney Harbour cruise. So, yeah. Um, I'm now asked another question. If you could listen to just one song for the rest of your life, what would it be? Um, probably Bohemian Rhapsody because it has so many different elements of music in it. It's one of my favourite pieces of music. Um, or something more classical based, so, um, like, uh, uh, Solier, um, Mighty Sun by Andrea Bocelli, something like that, maybe. Um, and if you could only watch one movie for the rest of your life, what would it be? A uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show. Absolutely. I, I have watched that movie so many times, I am almost word perfect for that script, because I've watched it so many times. Absolutely love it absolute favourite movie of all time, without a doubt. <laughs> uh, Aiden asks, what is one thing that Americans should know about Australia? Not everything is trying to kill you, just most things. Actually, <laughs> not everything, just just most things. The fact that we have uh, something like eight of the most deadly animals on the planet living in Australia. The truth of the matter is, the places where most of those exist are not where people in Australia actually live. Um, Australia is very heavily populated around the edge and very sparsely populated in the centre, because the centre is a desert, and it is quite... Um, there's a couple of what you what Americans would refer to as ranches. We don't call them ranches, but um, there are a couple, of the, and they are they are vast, um, and by vast I mean the size of country type of vast. They're like huge. Um, there are a few of those in the desert type areas, but um, the majority of Australians live along the coast um, because that's where the arable land is. Um, and most of the really deadly animals live in the desert areas and the less populated areas. Uh, unless you happen to live in Sydney, where they have the Sydney funnel web spider, they do 
uh, routine um, extermination like pesticide sprays across the whole of Sydney on a regular basis to limit the number of people who get killed by that particular spider because um, it is fatal if you don't get medical attention quite quickly. But yeah, not everything is trying to kill you in Australia and it is actually quite safe to come here. You're not going to get killed if you come here. Just, just, just watch out for the drop bears. If you could visit anywhere in the world, where would you go and why? Um, I really, really would love to go one day to Italy. I just, there's just something about it as a country that just draws me. The language, just the people. I, I know quite a few Italians. Um, but also kind of like to go to England because that's where my family sort of comes from. It's where my partner's family comes from. Um, uh, he was born in England. Uh, so, um, yeah. But I don't know, Italy is like on the top of my list. Just, just is. Uh, Sherry Lewis Prosh asked, "What's one passion that you have that nobody knows, but uh, but you would share? A passion that I have that nobody knows about." Oh. Mm, I don't know whether you'd necessarily call it a passion, um, but I am obsessed with pimple popping videos and medical style videos like surgeries and stuff like that. Uh, they are what I watch to relax. <laughs> so pretty much the last thing I do before I go to sleep at night is watch a pimple popping video. I follow a lot of channels that put them out. Some of them are, you know, those crappy channels that like steal people's videos. But if I can find the original source, I'll like subscribe to that channel instead. But uh, yeah, um, it, uh, it's something I'm quite um, passionate about, I guess. But it's um, there is actually a very good reason for it. Um, I have dermatillomania, which is like a really mild form of it, which is. Um, it's like um, tryptolomania, the one where you pull your hair out. It's like that, but it's skin related instead, so you like pick at your skin. Um, and I find that watching pimple popping videos actually stops me from doing it quite as much. Um, and it also is tied in with self-harming. Um, you get the same kind of satisfaction from watching, well I do, get the same kind of satisfaction as I would if I was self-harming. So instead of self-harming by like making myself bleed, I watch a pimple popping video. Don't do any damage to myself, nobody's getting hurt here. And yeah, so. But other than that, uh, and um, I guess another passion that most people don't realise is I really love classical music. I'm strange, but I like classical music. I like lots of different styles of music, but classical music is... I, I, I really love that stuff. So emotive and ah, I just love that. It comes from that kind of like wanting to be an opera singer background. Probably also why I like Italy so much is the opera singer thing. Um, and Renee asked, <laughs> she thought she'd missed because I said I was filming it later today. Um, that was like yesterday, only I didn't do it. Um, yeah, uh, Renee asked, if you were in the show Walking Dead, what would your name be? Uh, I've honestly never watched Walking Dead, um, so my name would probably be my name, as it uh, probably be half, because, like, that's my name. Um, where would you be when the outbreak started? I'd be in Australia, because that's where I live, and I'd probably be fine right there. And what, <laughs> and what were you doing? probably uh, sitting here just thinking, isn't it great that I live here where the zombies aren't going to get? Um, and what would your choice of weapon be and how long do you think you could survive? Well, I mean, not to be facetious, Australia is probably the best place to be if a uh, zombie outbreak actually occurs um, because it's probably a virus and um, viruses have a lifespan and people who get it will eventually stop moving because they're dead and decomposing, which means they eventually are not going to, you know, ligaments are going to start falling apart, etc, etc. Happens pretty rapidly in hot weather. So I would basically uh, pack 
up as much supplies as possible and hightail it into the desert. And I would probably, you know, uh, I'm, I'm not sure what I'd use as a weapon. Probably, <laughs> sorry, my daughter just said a frying pan, which is a Terry Pratchett reference, and I'm very proud of her for that. <laughs> uh, I probably would try to get some kind of uh, you know, gun, I guess. Yeah. There are guns in Australia. We have very strict gun rules, but there are guns in Australia. You can actually get hold of them, and relatively easily, as long as you pass all clearances and stuff. Um, yeah, so probably some kind of gun or something, or... Um, I, don't, I don't really... I'm not really the fighter person. I'm more likely to hide, but or run away. Um, yeah, so... <laughs> really, I really don't know how long I would survive. Assuming that I had supplies and I got into the desert and... Um, I think, it, you know, if it actually ever managed to get to Australia, um, I probably would be fine. I also live in a fair, I mean, although it's more densely populated than it has been for a long time, I don't live in the capital city of Australia or in the area that is most highly populated and most likely to be an outbreak centre because I live sort of in an, a semi-rural area. So I probably, you know, probably would survive quite a long time. In fact, it probably would. There's, you know, a likelihood it wouldn't end up anywhere near me, quite honestly. So, yeah. Um, as I said, I don't watch The Walking Dead. It's not my, not in my wheelhouse at all. I don't like those kind of uh, television programs. And um, I'm ambivalent about zombies. I just, I just, <laughs> I don't really care about them. They're just whatever. Um, yeah, so, yeah, so that is going to be it for this video. Everybody who asks me questions is going to be linked down below their YouTube channels. Um, and if I have their, um, Instagram, if they do that, I'll have that linked as well. So go and check all of those people out. They're all fellow YouTubers. They're all part of the Geeks and Beauties group. So if you're interested in being involved in a group, which is super duper supportive, um, and they do collabs. Um, and we're, we're starting, there's a new kind of thing starting where we're helping uh, channels grow and expand their brand, um, you know, if they want to be reviewers and influencers, trying to help people, like, do that a little bit more. Um, yeah, and, you know, it's, even though it says Geeks and Beauties, you don't have to be a beauty channel, you can, we've got... Uh, one guy in particular, um, Andrew, he's a gamer, and basically he just posts Let's Plays on his channel. So, and he is in the group and completely welcome. We have people who do planning videos. We do pe have people who do DIYs, reviews on all sorts of different things, unboxings in lots of different areas, not just beauty type stuff. So if you make YouTube videos and you're looking for a really supportive group, then Kicks and Beauties is someone to group to consider. You will have to answer some questions before you get into the group and we only um, authorise new people once a week generally speaking. And we, you know, they do have an expectation of activity. It is not a link dropping group. So if you're looking for something like that, I will link Geeks and Beauties down below so you can check them out. If you want to subscribe, click the button down there. Leave me a thumbs up if you like question and answers. And if you have any other questions, anything I didn't answer, anything you want to know more about, leave it down below. I can always do another question and answer video. And leave me a comment down below. I try to respond to all comments. And I'll see you in my next video. See ya.